Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's Cohen back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer. Earlier today, I uploaded a video entitled The NBA is on Fire, and that was because the NBA was on fire. We saw two of the premier players in the league, Chris Paul and Kawhi Leonard, two faces of their franchise, announce that they would both be out indefinitely for the NBA playoffs. Chris Paul with a positive COVID test, hopefully he's able to return for the Western Conference Finals, and Kawhi Leonard announced out with a knee injury that some people fear is an ACL, which potentially could keep him out for the next year, calendar year, not just NBA year. And so it was already a weird start to the day when that happened alongside two NBA coaches being fired and a lot of movement in front offices, as well as the announcement of the Rookie of the Year award to Anthony Edwards' dismay. So a lot was going on earlier today. And in that video, I said, you never know with the NBA. And that's always kind of my motto. I can watch a million NBA games, and I do. I've watched way more basketball than most people probably would ever consider doing. Because <laughs> I, I just love the sport, and I want to be informed to make these videos for you guys. And that includes I've watched every single playoff game that has happened so far. Um, maybe at some point there'll be some time where I'm busy and I just can't watch a game, but up to this point, I've watched every single one. And despite the fact that I've watched every single one and I follow the NBA as close as any fan could possibly ever, I still don't get it. The NBA continues to surprise me every single day. And that's what happened tonight. Because in that video, I said, you know, how can things get weirder in the NBA? And then the two games that I'm about to talk about both happened. If you asked me to predict earlier today who I thought were going to win these games, I would have said the Philadelphia 76ers and the Utah Jazz. The Sixers because I thought they had things figured out. Even when they lost games, the Hawks never looked good in any of their wins, and the Sixers always looked dominant in theirs. So I've been thinking the Sixers had it figured out, and for the first half, it looked like I was right. The Sixers were up by 22 points going into halftime. And then the Hawks won. 109-106 to 106 at the end of four quarters. In the Jazz Clippers game, I would have picked the Jazz because, as I mentioned previously, Kawhi Leonard was announced out for the foreseeable future, potentially the rest of the playoffs, with a knee injury. And so with just Paul George going up against a Jazz team that had already been giving them problems throughout the series, even when the Jazz were losing, they were keeping things competitive for the most part, and they had already won two games in this series. Kawhi Leonard has been the best player in the playoffs up to this point. And so without him, I didn't know how the Clippers were going to get it done. Even with Mike Conley still sidelined and Donovan Mitchell still dealing with his ankle injury, I didn't think the Clippers had the firepower. And then the Clippers came out and won. Once again in the first half, like in the Sixers-Hawks game, I thought the Jazz were going to win. The Jazz were up big for a little bit, and that's because they were nailing three after three after three. And then Paul George showed up, and Reggie Jackson showed up. But I'll talk about that game in a second. I do want to start with Sixers-Hawks. I feel like I've kind of pushed this series to the back burner. These games, or the games in this series, I typically talk about as second in my videos. So I want to put it front and center for this one, uh, because it deserves it. This was one of the most unbelievable NBA games I've ever watched. I watched every single second of this game, and I still don't believe what I saw. It's been hours since this game ended. This game started at 7.30 my time. It's 1.42 in the morning, and I still don't believe what I saw. That's how insane it was. The Sixers were firing on all cylinders. Joel Embiid had 17 points in the first quarter of this game, more than he had all night last game, and the Sixers were close in that one. Joel Embiid and, and then Seth Curry showed up, and Seth Curry put up 36 points. If you look at this stat line and Joel Embiid has 37, Curry has 36, and they went into the fourth quarter up 18 points, you would think there was no way in hell the Sixers lost this game, and then they collapsed. I've never seen a team fold like that since yesterday with the Milwaukee Bucks. It was the biggest collapse since yesterday, so you know that's kind of how the NBA is going right now. You can just never predict in this league. The Sixers, as soon as the Hawks started showing them some fight, they just folded. It was crazy to watch. No one on the Sixers at the end of the game wanted to take a shot but Embiid and Seth Curry. And you know how many points or how many buckets people other than Seth Curry and Joel Embiid made in the second half of this game? Zero. Not a single field goal was made by either of, or anyone outside of those two guys. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure I, I stat checked that. That's ridiculous. No one wanted to go for it. Tobias Harris, who I have been defending constantly. Same with Ben Simmons. I've defended both of those players a lot because especially with Tobias Harris, this is his breakout season. 
This is the best we've ever seen Tobias Harris play. He was an all-star worthy guy. He didn't make the team, but he has now finally this season been playing up to his max contract that most people have been calling one of the worst contracts in the league. And he's been amazing this season. He's been their closeout guy for a lot of games. He's hit the, some tough buckets that helped the Sixers secure the one seed and get to where they are now. Ben Simmons is a defensive player of the year type guy, a great playmaker. He just can't hit a shot to save his life. And they needed him badly tonight. They needed someone to hit a shot other than Embiid, other than Seth Curry. You've got great bench options. You've got great scores in your starting lineup. Someone's got to make something happen. And outside those two guys, no one could. Tobias Harris had a good look at a floater towards the end of the game. He passed it up. He just didn't shoot it. He's afraid. And I love Tobias. Tobias Harris has become one of my favorite players to watch over the course of this season with how good he's become. And I was like, dude, what the hell are you doing? Uh, this Hawks team to start the game looked like the exact opposite. This looked like the exact opposite of the way that the, the game went in game one of this series. The Hawks took a big lead. The Sixers made a huge run to come back, but the Hawks held on at the end. That was the difference here. The Sixers, when faced with that adversity, unlike the Hawks, they folded. And now they're going into game six in Atlanta, down 3-2. One game away from potentially ending the Ben Simmons Joel Embiid era. If they lose this game, I think Ben Simmons is gone. They're not going to trade Embiid. He's an MVP. They're not. I don't think they'll trade Tobias Harris either. I think Ben Simmons is the odd man out. If they lose game six, I think Ben Simmons is done. Does that signal the end of the process era? I don't think so because you still have Joel Embiid but it would signal the end for that duo. And so this is where champions are made. Do the Sixers stand up and fight or do they just say, well, we threw that one. We're done. Let's see what they're made of. I picked them to come out of the East. I've been a believer in them all season. I've been saying all year that people need to take this Sixers team seriously. And then they folded today, giving up 21 more points than they scored in the fourth quarter. Lou Williams won in this ridiculous run. He was such a good pickup by them. Rajon Rondo was hardly playing for the Clippers, and the Hawks got Lou Will and two second-round picks for him. That was a huge steal for the Atlanta Hawks. Amazing move, and another great move by a front office that has built a perfect team around Trey Young. Bogdan Bogdanovich, who has been the key to the Hawks in most of these games, had six points tonight. He played 21 minutes because he couldn't stop fouling people. Kevin Herter had zero, and they won. Because John Collins had 19, Trey Young had 39, Danilo Gallinari had 16, I wish he did that last year in the playoffs, and then Lou Will had 15. That was pretty much it. Those were the guys. One guy on the Sixers, if one guy stepped up outside of Embiid and Seth Curry, they win this game. One guy. And he only needs to hit a couple shots. Embiid at the end of the game missed two free throws back to back in the same free throw line possession. Um, and that's something he doesn't do. And I think he was just gassed. He spent all game carrying this team. He did whatever he could. He came back in way earlier than he was supposed to in that fourth quarter, playing 39 minutes, which is a lot. He came back in early in that fourth quarter because they couldn't hold the lead without him. They were giving it up right before his eyes. So he got up off that bench and he said, I'm getting in this game. And it wasn't enough. I think if the Sixers take game six in Atlanta, I think they'll win it all. I think whoever wins this game six, obviously if the Hawks win game six, they win the series. But if the Sixers win game six, I think they can come back to Philly and get it done in game seven. But I've been doubting this Hawks team. I have. And they've been proving me wrong every single turn. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe the Hawks come out here and the Sixers have no fight and they blow them out in game six. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. But maybe the Sixers, maybe I'm right. And maybe they show the fight that I've seen in them all season. But if they don't, might be the end of the process which is crazy to say. Jazz Clippers. Uh, like I said, if I had to pick this game, I would have picked the Jazz coming into it. No Mike Conley, still. Hopefully he's able to come back soon. Donovan Mitchell, still nursing an ankle injury, and that was clear tonight. A lot of the times, uh, he wasn't really attacking quite the way that he usually does. It's taking a toll on him. It is. And that's not an excuse for him at all for losing this game because this was still a game they should have won. With no Kawhi Leonard, who, like I said, has been the MVP of the playoffs so far. You can argue other guys. I'm taking Kawhi Leonard so far in the playoffs. And Paul George, the guy that everyone has been clowning for the whole season, the guy that I said was going to have a good playoff run, showed up. 
And you might be wondering, you might have looked at what I'm wearing right now, or me, you probably haven't, to be honest, because why would you do that? But right now, I'm wearing a jersey I haven't worn in a very long time, and that is my Oklahoma City Paul George jersey. I haven't, this thing's been, this thing's probably dusty right now, and I should probably wash it, because I haven't pulled this thing out of my closet in about a year, two years, three, not three years. I haven't pulled it out of the closet in like two years, two and a half years, maybe. But he earned it. This was an incredible performance from a guy that everyone has been clowning, calling nicknames, and he hasn't been able to shake that stupid playoff P thing since he said those words before the series, coincidentally, against the Jazz when he played for the Thunder. He said, y'all ain't met playoff P. And then he sucked in game six against the Jazz when we needed him most. And here he is in a game five, not a game six, but maybe he'll do it again in game six. In game five, a pivotal game without the best player on his team, one of the best players in the world, and so far the best player throughout the playoffs by his side. He didn't have him. And he could have went out there just guns blazing and failed. But instead, he played it slow. He played his game. And he came out and he beat the Jazz. He had some help, of course. You don't win in this league without help. Uh, Terrence Mann had 13 points. He gave them some good, some good minutes. Reggie Jackson had 22. And Marcus Morris had 25. All of those guys stepped up. And that's where I think this team is different from the Clippers of last year. I've been saying this before. This Clippers team is more well-rounded. And Paul George is playing better. Those are the reasons why they're winning. Kawhi is still Kawhi. Paul George has elevated his game. And these role players are just stepping up more often. And that's what they need. And now, without Kawhi Leonard, they, they have taken the Jazz to the brink. They are one game away from their first conference finals appearance ever. And if they don't have Kawhi Leonard, they're not getting past the Suns. They're just not. Um, and that sucks. But, you know, making the conference finals isn't any small feat. And if Paul George is able to pull this off and drag them to the conference finals past the dominant Utah Jazz, who hit 17 threes in the first half. 17 threes. The record to keep in mind for threes in an NBA playoff game by a single team is 25. They were eight short after the first half and the Clippers were right there with them. They weren't getting blown out at half or anything. They were right there because Paul George kept them in this game with 37, 16 and five. He played 40 minutes for his team. Shout out Nick Batum, by the way, who played 42 minutes. This was just incredible. They played great team defense. They relied on each other and trusted each other. They didn't slip into hero ball. They kept their system going. What worked all game, they stuck with it because they saw the they saw what was happening. And then Terrence Mann dunked on Rudy Gobert, and that was the end. Um, Donovan Mitchell did what he tried to do, what he usually does, and clutch up at the end of the game. It just wasn't enough. This Clippers team was just on a mission tonight. Bojan Bogdanovic had 32, by the way, which was crazy. Uh, he started off six for six from the field, which were all threes. And I was like, oh, okay, so Bojan Bogdanovic is just going to break the three-point record in a playoff game tonight, I guess. Um, didn't end up doing that, but he still had a good game with 32 points. 12 for Royce O'Neal, who had a couple really bad fouls towards the end of the game. Donovan Mitchell with 21, 5, and 5. He's doing what he can. Jordan Clarkson had 15, but almost all of those came in the first half, and he just had some awful shots, as he has most of the season. And Rudy Gobert was 17 and 10. It wasn't really a bad performance from the Jazz, necessarily. It could have been better. Donovan Mitchell could have been more efficient. You could have had more from some of your peripheral guys. But ultimately, this was just a Clippers win. This was a big win for them. And now, like I said, one game away from the first conference finals in franchise history. And if Paul George brings them there, there's no reason Kawhi shouldn't want to look at this team and go, I'm going to resign. That's the biggest thing here. Because if they lose in this series, I still don't think Kawhi leaves or anything like that. But it leaves the door open, maybe even just a touch. But I think if Paul George and the other guys win this, either game six or game seven, they just make it to the conference finals, it shows Kawhi that he has help. He, he can win here. And so it's up to playoff P. I'm not calling him pandemic P anymore. I'm not. With the performance he had tonight and the way he's played in these playoffs, he has proven all the narratives wrong. And I've never been someone to call him like pandemic P or whatever. It's funny sometimes, but he's playoff P which is weird to say in a serious tone, because typically that is not at all something serious you would say. Um, so shout out to Paul George, shout out to the Clippers as a whole. 
Let's see what they're made of. Um, the Suns right now just chilling at home watching these two fight to the death. There, I guarantee you they're praying that the Jazz make it out or the Jazz make this a seven game series so that Chris Paul can take some more time to get through health and safety protocols. And hopefully Chris Paul is back for game one of the Western Conference Finals. Even if he's not, I, both of these teams are pretty beat up and I think the Suns can still put up a fight. But to win the series, they might need Chris Paul. If you go up against the Clippers, maybe not because they don't have Kawhi um, and the Jazz might not have Mike Conley, but you, you don't want to be out there without Chris Paul. So let's see what these two teams are made of. Uh, and additionally, let's see what the Sixers are made of. Let's see what the Jazz can do. The Jazz have been the one seed. They've been talking about all the disrespect they've been getting all season. Let's see what they're made of. Show us. Win this in, win this in seven games. Take down the Clippers. Stop them from making their first conference finals. Let's see what you're made of. So those are my thoughts on the games today. Um, once again, shout out to Paul George and big shout out to Trey Young who balled out. He's, he's fought, he's played against a crowd in Madison Square Garden and Philly. Those are two of the most ridiculously like loud crowds you can face in your first playoff series. And he's just stepped up to the challenge. Incredible stuff from him. Um, I've seen some people say he's a top 10 player. I think we should pump the brakes maybe a little bit on that, but he is really good. I don't want to take away from him at all. So uh, if you made it to this point in the video, drop an ice tray in the comment section below to give a shout to Trey Young or a playoff P. Either one, both of them were great tonight. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Let me know who you have winning each of these series and what you thought of these games. Like I said, you never know what's going to happen in the NBA. And if today wasn't proof of that, I don't know what is. So I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys later.